Good day and welcome at Reflections of Esther. We are in the first month of this brand new year, January 2017. This month our topic will be worship. I think it would be a great idea to start this new year by thanking God for new beginnings new ideas, new inventions, new choices and new commitments. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 we read, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Therefore, let us now, while we are still at the beginning of this new year, make a choice to give thanks to the one who makes everything new. That is what worship means to me. It is to let go of all my thoughts, my worries, my fears, my burdens, my insecurities, my selfishness and just become quiet quieting my chatterbox and start focusing on him the author and finisher of my faith in Hebrews 12 2 we read looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. To totally surrender myself to God so that I may enter his glorious presence while focusing on him and admiring His purity and holiness and also confessing my sins and wrongdoings as sin cannot enter God's presence. In times like these it's almost like being clothed with His glory, His peace, His love, His compassion, His contentment. And when one reaches this stage of being so close to the Father, one does not want to be disturbed or taken away from His almighty, His all-powerful, unstoppable, invincible presence. This is the moment where your heart, soul and spirit connects with that of God the Father. If you could get to this point in your quiet time with God, you will receive new strength as mentioned in the scripture. In Isaiah 40 verse 28 to 31 we read as follows. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So this is what worship is all about. Surrendering all to your Creator. When you really get to know God in this manner, you will know 
that is all you need because you may lose all material things on earth and even your loved ones, family and friends. But if you still have him, you will have enough as he will never leave nor forsake you. One morning in my time of worship, I wrote this prayer of adoration and I wish to read it to you. Lord, you are the Alpha and Omega. You were here since the beginning and you will be here until the very end. Lord, you are the same yesterday, today and forevermore. No other name is as powerful as yours. Lord, you know our yesterdays and our tomorrows. You hold our future in your hands. Every breath that we take comes from you. Every beat of our hearts is from you. You are the anchor we cling to. You are the rock on which we build our house and our future. You are our safe haven. You are our strength. You are the winds beneath our wings. We take refuge in the shadow of the Almighty. We surrender all to you, Lord. Even all our own efforts in trying to please you. We place everything at your feet total serenity in your presence, total completeness of peace and joy, total freedom in you, total peace, total joy, total contentment, all together in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. You see, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. He is the door into the presence of Father God. When you go through Him, you will experience a transformation beyond belief. And as sin cannot enter the presence of God, one has to be changed. And that means having an encounter with Jesus Christ as your Savior. For he is the door to salvation. In John 14 verse 5 to 6 we read, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And then Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Whilst being busy with worship one morning, I saw this image of a man dressed in drags, walking with bended back as though he had the whole world on his shoulders. And he was actually on his way to Jesus. And as he came to Jesus, he walked right through him as through a doorway. When he came out on the other side, he was transformed into a spirit being and was clothed with glory, God's glory, because he was in the presence of God, the Holy God. You see, God longs for us to come into his presence because it's in his presence that we have full completion of joy joy unspeakable and full of glory worship is not about singing songs on a Sunday morning at church it's a lifestyle each and every day worship is part of one's thoughts one's actions, 
one's responses, one's words and outlook on life. It is a new commitment every morning. It's all about choices. Changing your mindset by allowing God to be in control. As He knows you since you were created in your mother's womb. You need not tell Him of all your worries and concerns. He is pretty much aware of what's going on in your life right now. Trust Him to take control of all your fears, your worries, concerns and hard desires. You see, when you release these burdens to the Lord, you will experience true liberty in Christ. In conclusion, I want to end with the following. I trust that you have a better understanding of true worship now and my prayer is that this message won't be just another message on worship but that this seed will fall on well prepared ground so that it can grow and produce a harvest hundredfold. Be blessed and enjoy your time in the presence of the Almighty God. Be blessed.